big announcement here. Our second book, our sophomore book, Lady Secrets, Real, Raw, and Ridiculous Confessions of Womanhood is available now for pre-order. Head over to theladygang.com slash secrets to pre-order your book now. We're so excited about this. Thank you to our community who submitted all of their deepest, darkest secrets. And there's a couple sprinkled in there from yours truly and the other two dum-dums on this podcast. We love you guys so much for your support. We're so excited for you guys to read this. Head on over and order Lady Secrets at theladygang.com slash secrets. Everything is better electrified, and Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. It's time for a quickie. Podcast One presents The Lady Gang, the Hollywood girl posse, with Lady Gang Quickie. Here's Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Let's make this quick. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Lady Gang Quickie. I am Becca here with Jack and Kelty. Hello. Hey. Yeehaw. Hi, folks. Set the scene. So, let me set the scene, okay? Okay. It's, it's um, Eve. a summer's eve. Like, not like the vaginal wash, just <laughs> actually summer evening. Mm-hmm. We're sponsored. in the uh, hills of Woodland, of, of Sherman, Sherman Oaks. Oaks, in Kelsey's home. I'm farting up a storm. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are cuddled up in blankets, sitting around a table. We're all IRL, in person, in mm-hmm. real life, together. Mm-hmm. And Kelty has held us hostage for 45 hours mm-hmm. of work. And that's it. We're here to to do a quickie. We don't know the theme. It's probably going to be exciting and exhilarating. It really is. I just want to tell everyone that um, I hope you're having a great summer. Oh. Yeah. And I want to just say something. This is along the lines of a Jack Vanek kind of moment. And you maybe could speak on this. One thing I've always beat myself up over my entire life even when I was a dancer, even when I thought I was like my cutest, mm-hmm. is summertime fashions and the bikini photos. Like you're Ugh. always taking a picture and you're always looking at the picture being like, I hate something about my body at this moment. And mm-hmm. and I want to preface like everyone's at a different level of that. And even if you are a skinny girl or whatever, like you can still have your thoughts about this. And I've consistently every year summer comes and I'm on the beach or I'm doing Mm -hmm. something where I'm in the bathing suit picture and I'm really fucking hard on myself. And then now that I've had, now that iPhones have been around long enough, right? Cause Mm -hmm. we didn't, I didn't have iPhone phones like that when I was young. I have like a good 15 years, 12 years of summers. And I look back at the pictures of me from summers past and I'm so gorgeous. And I mean this, like, I know this sounds so Celtic. Sexy mature. But you're like, it's like, but like me, I remember being on this trip with Chris. I didn't feel my best. I felt really bloated. I was like, how would he even want to, you know? And I'm looking at this picture. I'm like, you're so beautiful. So if it's summertime and you're feeling like, you know, cellulite and you're not feeling great and you're going to the thing and you don't want to do the thing and like, just, you're so much more beautiful and younger or more vivacious than you think you are. Just like take a deep breath and like enjoy. It's nice out. You're wearing a bathing suit. Life's good. Oh, I liked that. What do you think, intro. Jack? No, I loved it. Is it, is that what this episode is about? Or no, I just, just wanted to, to tell you. No, Cause it's the middle like of the summer and I feel like it's like, you know, it's just such a pressure cooker time. And the, the hard thing about summer is that it's the best food. You're like, I just yeah, want to sit and, and you're drink. So social. Times. You're so social. It's the best times. There's so many chips and dips. Yep. And then and beer and be- uh, like all of it. And then the it's like stuff. all the things that like are, you know, and then you are like, oh, I really like it's just this everyone- is this is why I'm so fucking sick of women having to wear bikinis. I want to be in a swim costume again. <laughs> so I talked that, about this on the top of Lady Gang. No, I am so sick of. Of having to show my body if I want to socialize in summer or go into a body of water. Why do I have to show my thighs and Zach doesn't? It's true. It's fucking annoying. I mean, I guess I don't have to, but if I don't, I'm going to be the weirdo on the beach in a board short that people are making fun of. I used to wear a board short and a <laughs> yeah, Budweiser t-shirt. I actually t-shirt. do think that the tankini is coming back in style. But it's not even, that's not even the area I want to cover up. Yeah, it's That's true. the shitty part about you it. You want like Why a can't I have a Drop crotch bathing suit bottom. You need to wear Kelty's <laughs> muumuu into the water. I do, but then I'm going to drown myself. <laughs> no, I actually, I, I have, the older that I get, the more upset I get every bathing suit season. Because 
I am really sick of the bathing suits that they're making. I got sent a bathing suit from somebody who has a collaboration. And when I tell you the bottom of this bathing suit looked like I was about to go get a bikini wax Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or a massage, (laughs) that's an, that is an understatement. It was the most, and listen, I don't care if you want to wear that, you should wear that. Godspeed to you and your waxer. But I don't want that to be my only option for what I can wear and look cute in. But that is coming up. That's all I'm seeing. No, that's the problem with, I think, a lot of our options in general for purchasing a bikini is they look really, really good for, like, a picture. Yeah, and then I don't... But it doesn't... But it does not... The little teeny tiny with the, like... Yeah. The ruching kind of... Yeah. That looks sort of like a... Yeah, like a... I want to be on a pontoon boat (laughs) stepping over things and not worry that my labia is going to fall out. No, they're not conducive to normal life. And so I have, I have really dug in a few months ago, Fabletics started doing swim. How is it? And well, when I first got it, I was like, I, a uh, good try Fabletics, but like, it's so cheeky. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want my ass out. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even like my bum that much, you know, like she's fine. She's, I'm she's upset. Fine. I had a great ass in my twenties. Right. And we like, weren't wearing thongs. No, then. we weren't. We were in mm-hmm. boy, little boy shorts anyway. But then I wore it. And Chris was like, this is the best bathing suit you've ever worn. Of course, because I'm naked. But here's the thing. Here, here's a thought I had about this. And this is opposite swim costume. I'm now, and I don't know if it's because <laughs> I'm 40 it. and I give no fucks anymore. But, like, I've realized that I'm not going to be the hottest person in any room or any social situation ever again. That's not true. Okay. If I, I think mean, this, it also doesn't matter. Like, well, it doesn't matter. You're right. You're right. It doesn't matter. It really matter. doesn't. And I feel like it, this is so subjective to like every single person. The thing that I'm trying to do is just not think about it so much. Uh. Like my problem is I would, I was, I would obsess over each little fucking dimple. I'd obsess over every single thing. I would like throw myself into a fucking tizzy spiral. And then I finally got to a point where I'm like, I'm just going to try to stop looking at myself so much. Because mm. the more I'm looking in the mirror, the yeah. more I'm going to pick myself apart. Mm. I know that I have a great body compared to... No, I'm lot. not even going to say that. That's why I feel like I can't talk about it No, anymore. you can. <laughs> you, can. you can. You absolutely can. Because I also feel like I have a great body. I'm not saying I, was I do. I just going to say, I, that's gonna you both have feedback. great bathing suit bodies. So I'm sure people are listening and they're like, they want to murder. But... I did that too for a long time. And what sucks is you do that. And I don't really, I never used to think about my body at all, ever. And then pictures and fucking social media and oh, everywhere, yeah. everywhere, everywhere. And I would catch a picture of some fucking person that posted of us on the beach and it's candid. And it's like, I didn't want to see that. I almost feel like I'm bombarded with images of myself when I don't, I never wanted to see my, I never wanted to think about myself. I never wanted to see myself, but it's like unavoidable. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's also really hard to not really hard, but like, She's fine. Oh, I thought that was a different animal in well, here, and yeah. I got really nervous. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I just, that's the the worst part is when I get caught off guard, when I'm mm. feeling really good, or yeah. not even really good, just not even thinking about myself, yeah. just like everyone else isn't thinking about me. And then someone's like, let's take a picture. Stop. Stop asking people to take pictures in bathing suits. If you want to take a picture in a bathing suit, go take your picture in a bathing suit. Don't ask for a group picture in a fucking bathing suit. I think it's rude. Well, I <laughs> am telling you that I've doubled down on the tiny crotch bikini. I'm loving it this summer. I'm wearing it the little ruche front, like just, and I have a huge vagina. <laughs> and when I go to get my cheese plate from the fridge, my vagina falls out the side and Chris Knight <laughs> sees it. And this is and not, he loves but it. you're this at is home. Not a, I'm at home. There's, this is not a bathing suit I can wear anywhere else. I have a swim costume idea, <laughs> a swim unitard. No, I still don't like that. Okay. I need... I don't looseness. Yeah. Or something that's just not so like, like why do men? Well, I guess they have to show their, t- their tops. Like, I love a man in a short short. Like I oh understand. Jared just got some new chubbies in the mail that are like a Long? five inch inseam small. Yeah. I love but a short short like on a man. Th- but but they have to be the right thigh. body. A man yeah. thigh is so, no, he is so hot. He is and so I understand bulky. why Chris is like, this is the best bathing suit because I've always been like, I'm going to do like the full kind of like bloomer bottom. Cause that's like the most, you know, covered and whatever. And then I was just like, 
look it. And he's like, you look hot. And I was like, so Speedo's next. Like I would, I love the man thigh is so sexual to me. You so love sexual. a man thigh. I love I a too. thigh more than a penis. Yeah. Everyone. A does. calf. I love a man calf. Oh. Like a big thick calf. Give me a mm. fucking meaty outer knee. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy mature. Okay. <laughs> when we come back, I have some questions. Lady Gang is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Hey, Lady Gang, whether you love true crime or comedies, celebrity interviews, news, or even motivational speakers, you could call the shots on what you're listening to as a podcast, right? And guess what? Now you can call the shots on your auto insurance, too. Enter the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. The Name Your Price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options. Now that's something you'll want to press play on. It's easy to start a quote and you'll be able to choose the best option for you fast. It's just one of the many ways you can save with Progressive Insurance. Quote today at Progressive.com to try the Name Your Price tool for yourself and join the over 27 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Everything is better electrified, and Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Their turbocharged engines have quiet, rapid acceleration, and you can use electric when you want it or gas when you need it. It's your journey. Evolve it beyond the pump and in the 2022 Tucson or Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Or you can be like me and get the Kona, which is 100% electric, and I love my little Kona so much. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at Hyundai USA. Dot com or call 562-314-4603 for complete details. The Lady Gang. All right. If, this is a very good question because we grew up babies of the 80s, mm-hmm. 90s? 90s. 80s, 90s. Okay. 80s, 90s. What is it considered? You, baby? Like, like well, I, I was born in the 80s, the 80s, child of the 90s. Yeah. That's it. 90s That's, kids. Yes. yes, we were 90s kids. Okay. So 90s kids, we live in this world. Well, I actually don't believe that for either of you. I think there's home movies since you were born. Yes. Okay. You <laughs> home movies since you're born? What do you mean? Like, we're, like you could you go back and movies? watch every recital you've ever done? Uh, not every, there's some stuff. Okay. Yeah. There's not a ton of so, documentation. I have no documentation. My parents do not love me. Obviously <laughs> there was no video camera. There's no, barely a photo. I tried to find after taking, you know, 20 years of classical ballet, I tried to find one picture of me in a point shoe yeah. uh-huh. and a classical ballet moment doesn't exist. Yeah. So if you could have a video of any event in your life, what would you choose? Like a really good, high quality, beautiful video of something that you would want to have the video of. Like if I could come follow you on the day of Glee and make a day in the life Glee so you just had it and like. No. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I know. It was a good example. Um, I don't know. I mean. You have yours? I no. Mean, I have a video of my wedding. It's fine. <laughs> I haven't had like a monumental day <laughs> yet. <laughs> Not really. You Worth did. Like... You just had a panic attack. At yeah, it. but Your I don't. Proposal. I don't want a video. There are videos of that that I refuse to watch. Yeah. See, it's not the things that you think, and then the things you think. Like I wish that I had videos of me as like a little. Dancer. I wish that I had videos of me as a little dancer because I have nothing, and I wish I had like. I think about my friend Christine and her her baby Carmela, right? Yeah. Carmela's like four right now and she's adorable and she's just so smart and she's always saying things that are so funny and weird and quirky and like and she's going to be able to grow up and like be an adult and be like, oh my God, look at when I was four. Like this is so yeah. funny and like yeah. I was so smart and like all these things. Like I have, you know, I mean, not that I'm like obsessed with myself, but I wish I had like more childhood videos like where I could. Yeah. Like, I could go back and be like, oh, my God, this is, like, me and my brother or me and my mom when I was a kid or something. You know, I have nothing. Anyway. I have well, so and it would help a lot in, my life. in therapy. There's so much, like, healing your child, yeah. the child you. And if you could have a more, like, I can't really picture myself. I don't know what I was like. I have stories, but it's, like, even, like, it's other people's version of you. But if you were actually able to, like, sit and watch yourself, you'd probably be a whole lot nicer to yourself. Oh yeah. Every time you look percent. at a little kid, you're like, Oh my God, what I like you would never want that little yeah. little being to hate themselves. Mm-hmm. Totally Not that we hate ourselves, and but we did just go on a tear about our thighs. I did. Yeah. I did. 
And Sorry. my parents are fucking liars. Like, you can't trust your parents' parents' opinion of you. No. No. You know, they're like, you're the best and the prettiest, and we're so sweet, and we loved you so much. I was like, I want to know if I was fucking annoying. Yeah. eight-year-olds all are, kids annoying. are annoying. Yes. No, I know. <laughs> but it's like, you know. Okay. <laughs> we were definitely annoying. Okay. And the youngest is always fucking annoying. Yeah, definitely annoying. The most annoying. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the most. Okay. Jack Vanek, what's the most illegal thing you've ever done? Oh, my God. Nothing. Really? Never? Shoplifting. The only thing I ever shoplifted was the um <laughs> the the top of a belly button ring. Oh right. Because yeah. that is the weirdest thing. Ever. <laughs> it's such a weird it's like thing. Such, it's like so <laughs> high so stakes jacked. for something <laughs> <Yes>. so <laughs> not important. <laughs> I don't know if I've done anything illegal hmm. that I can think of. Never broken into like a hotel pool when you're on tour with the band and you just want to go in the pool, but you guys didn't get a hotel that is day. Is that illegal? That's, That's not, not illegal. illegal. It's trespassing. No, it's not. To go into a hotel you're not staying at and go in their pool. You're not going to get arrested. You can't get arrested. A hotel pool. Okay. Have you done anything that could warrant an arrest? Yes. She's like, I jaywalked. I lived (laughs) illegally in the United States under a fake pretense. (laughs) (laughs) And I bought round trip tickets and only went one way. And only went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's pretty. (laughs) Is that illegal? Yes. Can you say that? Probably Can you not. have your citizenship revoked? I'm not a citizen. Oh, right. You have a yeah. green card? They, I have a green card. They make it so difficult. They know that's how people do it, but it's fine now. I'm devil's advocate. That's not the that's right, not the right using. Okay. Becca? Illegalness? Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything. I, I'm sure it was illegal when... When I was in living in New York and we were in college and my friends lived across the street from a tanning bed. I think I told this story before. Oh. That we would prank call the tanning bed yes. and yeah. say that we were stuck in the tanning bed and they yeah. burst into some yeah. poor person's tanning bed. It's kind of like there's this That's... show out right now of these guys. They're called uh, swatters. And what they would do is they would call in like bomb threats or no i don't like that or they well it's like a really illegal version of that so then they'd have like swat teams that would come over to like people's houses or i hate that it's kind of like that i think i vandalized things i think there was a phase in my life where i was really into graffiti into not graffiti but like just destroying things Mm. but i'm i don't know okay yeah what lie do you tell most often that I'm working on Lady Gang shit to get out of stuff. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. In your other life? Yeah. But what are you getting out of? Just like social engagements that I don't want to do mm. oh. or like my other work situation. Mm-hmm. Just a little white lie. Okay. What do you lie most about? Becca? I have to, just, just today, like I, I didn't. I don't know if it's a lie, but I won't tell people when I come into town Mm. because I don't, I do not have actual time to see them. Mm -hmm. And like today I stupidly made a story from it on Instagram about LA and I had a a bunch of people reach out and it's like one of whom is one, one of my closest friends. I didn't selectively not tell her, but I just, Right. What's the it's point a work trip. if you can't right. see them? Yeah. I used to do that all the time. When I was in New York all the time for work, so I'd be in and out. And, like, I would not tell the New Yorkers that I was coming. And then yeah. they would see me. But it's like, you know, like, people are understanding. You know, but They're not still, really, though. Yeah. Well. <laughs> what do you lie about, Kelty? Um, I lie about a ton. <laughs> so, um, one of my biggest lies that I tell, it's just, like, really condemning, is that I'll be like, <laughs> you know, I was at Entertainment Tonight for 10 years. Because it's Were easy. Were you not? Well, it's easier than being like, I was on theinsider.com for a year and a half. Then I was on The Insider. Then that got canceled, and I had three and a half years on Entertainment Tonight. Like, those are not all the same shows, but it's like, I was at CBS doing the show, but I wasn't on ET for 10 years. And I tell people all the time, because it's just easier than being like, right? Is that a big lie? For all the date. (laughs) It's only a big lie because it's not even close to 10 years, ET. Yeah, right. You know? Wait, how much was E.T.? Like three. <laughs> yeah. We could, let's work it down to five. Okay. We could say five years at E.T. Half a decade. Well, can I just be like, I just spent a decade at CBS well, and CBS did. News, which I did. Yeah, but it's, but the reason you're, like, when you're talking about it, Entertainment Tonight is like the big flashy thing. Right. Yeah. So it's, 
You can say five years in entertainment today. Okay. <laughs> Still alive. We're working on it. Okay. But everyone in entertainment's lying. Yeah, so who cares? Lying. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I lie to get out of things a lot too, Jack. I feel like you just tell people you don't want to do things. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. You don't have to lie. Mm-mm. They're like, all right, she's just a rude bitch. No, you're <laughs> right, actually. Yeah. I often, I mean, not often, but like, once or twice a year, I get caught in an email that I didn't mean to send that I have to lie about. Like, oops, this was in my drafts. It was for someone else. <laughs> like, <laughs> you or whatever, you know? Okay. Last thing. Ooh, this is such a nice way to end. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Callie, ready? Mm-hmm. Jack? I guess. What gives your life meaning? Oh, my God. I feel like we have these, this type of question, like, every time we do one of these. <laughs> yeah. Is, who's asking these Everyone. I don't think so. Um, meaning? Okay. <laughs> Bill, my family. My Ford. extended family and now my immediate family. Jack? Literally the same. What about you, Kelly? I don't feel that way. That's okay. Yeah. A lot of people don't. Jack I mean, I love my family. I wouldn't say they give my life but meaning. The, like, what Jack and I feel for our families is not normal yeah it's not like a a calm it's I mean it's normal but it's like I think you'd find more often than not adults not being like yes their immediate families maybe Mm -hmm. their kids and their husbands maybe Mm -hmm. not even their husbands Mm -hmm. but like you don't find a lot of people who really really want to be with their families Mm -hmm. like their parents their siblings Mm -hmm. their whatever Mm -hmm. yeah I know it's usually like so daunting and anxiety ridden yeah that's okay yeah Yeah. okay so mm, what gives my life meaning (sighs) awards likes achievements achievements applause views um I live for the applause I live for the applause no I think what gives my life meaning is vacations I know that sounds so (laughs) Okay. But let me explain myself. Honestly, same. No, I, I think that's great. I think that great. my life, like, is... You're your best self on vacation. I'm, I'm, I'm living my life in between great adventures. So it can't always be a great adventure. I feel the exact same way. But the great adventure is what I live for. Like, yeah. I can't wait to plan the next thing, find the next corner, go to the next part of the world, have the next big adventure. And, like, if I were to take a snapshot of every year of, like, when I'm the happiest, it's probably on some big adventure. So I'm going to say travel. That's great. Eat, pray, love. Bitches. No. And I get yourself ex- a gray. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go. It didn't work. You know, I'm Peggy. You know what they are too, and you're they're pressing labeled. your own. Yeah, they sounds are labeled. are labeled. Anyway, I hope that this episode gave you meaning, and we weren't here for a long time. <laughs> we were here for a good time. Yes, we were. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my god, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday.